If you thought our NFL draft coverage was over, you're probably happily mistaken. We will break down my top undrafted free agents, 20 plus, coming up here in a moment. We will also have a way too early 2025 mock draft for you early this week. Make sure you guys are subscribed for a whole lot more NFL coverage. Back-to-back -back years, the Minnesota Vikings have signed an undrafted free agent who I had ranked inside of my top 100. Last year, Ivan Pace. Win for me. I think the Vikings have done it again with Gabriel Murphy, the pass rusher, out of UCLA. I thought he was wildly undervalued, and I think still is wildly undervalued. 17% pressure rate this year, 16% pressure rate. He had some of the most pressures in football, except his teammate, Layatu Latu, had a bunch of them and also got home a little bit quicker. Uh, he is an, a very good football player. I think he's a good run defender, productive after jumping from UNT to UCLA. One issue, he has extreme outlier arm length. 30 and a half inch arms is like slot receiver length. It's a damn shame I didn't get to use my player comp for him on, the, on our live NFL draft coverage. It's Harold Landry, but he dressed up as a T-Rex for Halloween. It's just the arm length is why he went undrafted. Let's go to number two, Bo Brady from Maryland. Both the, skull, the, the, the college and his hometown is in Clarksville. Gets the stick home with the Baltimore Ravens. I think the special teams value here with 425 snaps could help him make a roster. He's done box stuff, and he's done free safety stuff. There's flexibility there. He is not an elite athlete. It was kind of average there. There is some, there's too many missed tackles as well. But I had a late fourth round grade on him. A little bit surprised he went undrafted because you can put together a nice little, uh, nice little highlight reel of him kind of flying around making plays. The Jets got Leonard Taylor out of Miami. Uh, I will make note, by the way, got some of the signing bonus stuff going in here. Uh, 10K signing bonus for him, 100, uh, 100K of his salaries guaranteed. Leonard Taylor is a former five-star recruit who just has never lived up to expectations. The flashes have been there, but frankly, he was, he was, even, more, he was even worse this year. They played him more at one technique, and I, I thought that, that was a, a bit of a mistake. Um, the above average testing there, the size, the length is very impressive, almost 34-inch arms. He plays high. I think he added weight trying to play one technique. I thought that was a mistake. Misses way too many tackles. And there are questions about some of the effort stuff. Um, I, think, I think that is a big reason why he went, he went undrafted. The motor, the motor can wane, and you know, you're a five-star, and you didn't produce at Miami of Florida. It's, I think there's a red flag for teams. Who do you think was the most surprising player to not be drafted? I probably actually would have gone with, beyond Gabriel Murphy, probably gone with, with Leonard Taylor because I think the potential is still kind of untapped there. The ad comes on YouTube. Take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. Eric Watts is next up, the pass rusher from UConn. Also going to the Jets with a bigger guarantee than Leonard Taylor, by the way. $245,000 in total guarantees for Watts. Huge frame. He's almost 6'6", 274, 35 and 3 fourths inch arms. He's an even more raw version for me of Ziggy Ansah. Um, has some size to kick inside. It'll probably be a five tech uh, to an extent. Kind of like, I think the Eric Armstead role in this Jets defense, obviously not nearly as, as good uh, from that uh, perspective. The production has kind of waned in only two sacks this past season. Um, the pro day agility was much better than the combine one. That, that's fine. He can bend a little bit, though, for a, for a bigger guy. I think this is, there's a lot of untapped potential here for Eric Watts. Gabe Hall, who's a little bit of a tweener. He's a unique body type. He's 6'6", 294 with, again, 34 and a half inch arms. He's long. He's tall. The athletic ability is there. The production has not been. Why he's undrafted, right? Three and a half TFLs, two sacks. Still had a fifth round grade on him. I, I actually was surprised he went undrafted. I think that finding players in that archetype of being that kind of three technique to five technique is intriguing. Got to play a little bit lower because the, the leverage is just going to be a, an issue for him. But, you know, he could add more weight if you want. You can get him up to 6'6", 330, I think, honestly. I don't think it's going to sap that much of the athletic production. It's a good pickup there by Philadelphia. The Chiefs got one of the Florida State defensive linemen, Fabian Lovett Sr., out of Ohio State. He simply doesn't offer much as a pass rusher. Um, it's just not who he is. He's 6'4", 316. He's a run-stopping, focused defensive tackle. Two years at Mississippi State, didn't do that much. Transfers to Florida State, 
and has much, much more success after making that, that transition there. 169, nice overall on my board. Who is your number one undrafted free agent signing? For me, it's obviously Gabriel Murphy. Hope the Vikings got another stud. Sound off for me in the comment section, though, of today's video. While you're down there, go check out the link to prizepicks.com at prizepicks.com slash CLNS. It's daily fantasy made easy. You pick more, pick less. That's it. It's all you have to do. Two to six player stat projections. NBA playoffs ongoing right now. You can win up to 100x your money on prize picks by making the right selections and, of course, winning. Now, that's the higher-end payout. I always advise the flex play. The flex play means you can get two out of three right, three out of four right, four out of five right, whatever, and still come out on top. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. That link's going to be in the comment section and the description of today's show. Beyond the NBA options, of course, that are available, NHL, NFL season-long prize picks are out. Patrick Mahomes, more than passing yards. Dak Prescott, more than uh, passing yards as well. CeeDee Lamb, more than receiving yards. And Micah Parsons, more than sacks because the injury risk is kind of already factored in for those guys. If they stay healthy, that's just below their numbers from last year. So one more time, it's prizepicks.com. Slash C L N S and use code C L N S for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Another Minnesota Viking here, Dwight McLaughlin out of Arkansas, my number twenty-four ranked corner, one seventy-five overall, fifth round grade. Thought he was better than, than in zone than he was in man, but he did play both for Arkansas. Really good ball skills, uh, more pass breakups than games played for the Razorbacks. Couple interceptions as well, seven of those. Um, didn't do much at LSU before transferring to Arkansas. Did miss three games with a concussion this year. That, that is, I think, a potential red flag for teams. He's kind of skinny. The, the length isn't great either, and he is a little stiff as well. Blake Watson, who I thought was one of the better running backs in this year's class, 18, 16th overall for me, excuse me, uh, number 191 overall. I got a Justice Hill comp on him, Broncos fans. That's who you can be thinking of right there. Highly productive runner, 1,000 yards this year through the air, or on the ground with 14 touchdowns and 480 through the receiving game. Offers kick return value. He's simply undersized for the position at 5'9 200 pounds. Uh, Non-combine invites, a bit of a fumble or two. I think he might be limited to a change of, uh, change of pace role, which is why maybe they weren't as, maybe big reason why I probably want to draft it. Curtis Jacobs, Penn State linebacker, 15th overall for me, just outside my linebacker, just outside my top 200. Shocker, he's a Penn State player who tested great athletically. It happens all the damn time there. Uh, my issue is he never jumped out for me. You know, the, the, the athletic traits are promising. I think there is some coverage upside. I didn't like him in run support. He kind of reminds me of um, the, the different body type. Uh, oh, the last Penn State linebacker that everybody loved. Uh, Brandon Smith, like he was a great athlete, better athlete than Jacobs. Didn't really know what he was doing at times. I get the same, same vibes there for, for Curtis Jacobs. Chiefs picked him up, though. Good, good a pickup. Top 10, right? Nelson Caesar, the edge rusher out of Houston. Sixth round grade for me, 204 overall. Consistent growth in his time at Houston. There is pass rush uh, specialist upside the problem is, and it's why he went undrafted, he had a higher grade for me before the draft, the testing. Testing was a disaster. Uh, 4.8940 at 254 with a bad shuttle, a bad three cone. Um, and when you weren't great as a run stopper, you're okay at Houston, you're gonna, not, the profile's not going to be a run stopper, and you're supposed to be a pass rush specialist, and you test badly athletically. I understand why he went undrafted. But I think there is still some ability uh, that has not been tapped in, or to be tapped into. Gottlieb. Yedje, out of Maryland, goes to the Philadelphia Eagles, 208 overall. He uh, was born in the U.S., lived in West Africa for 10 years, grew up speaking French, came back, had to learn English once he got here, uh, didn't really play football or re even really know what it was until his senior year of high school, and has become now an NFL player. Four years at Frostburg State, but you know where that is, shout out to you in the comments section. Uh, and then eventually was like, oh, I'll go to Maryland. It worked. He actually played pretty well against Johnny Newton, by the way. 
Um, has split time at right tackle, but also really right guard, I think was better uh, for him overall. He's just an older project. And sixth round grade for me, sneaky pickup there by Philadelphia. Kalen Deloach, I still think, uh, I forget who it was, drafted the wrong Florida State linebacker. I see special teams upside here. And that, I think he makes the Bucks roster as a special teamer. The straight line speed is awesome. 4-4-7, four, four, despite only being 2-10. He's almost kind of that weird safety linebacker hybrid. Almost 600 special team snaps. He had a draftable grade for me because of his special teams value. He's just stiff and didn't hold up very well in coverage, and he's small. Uh, but as a core special teamer, I am very intrigued. Who do you think had the best undrafted free agency class this year? AKA, you can just shout out your team because it's UDFAs and it's just about getting excited about them. Sound off for me in the comments section. Dalen Holker, or Holker, excuse me, out of Colorado State. Uh, BYU spent three years there, 521 yards, then 767 uh, for the Colorado State. Pass catching tight end two profile here. The, he, he is older. He, he actually enrolled in college in 2018. He went to BYU. He did the Mormon mission trip thing. That's, that's how it tends to go there. Um, I don't like him as a blocker, but there is pass catching tight end two ability here. Javion Cohen, who some people uh, kind of, I thought, wildly put him in the first round of mock drafts after he transferred to Miami when he, I didn't think he's that great in Alabama. Uh, good length for a guard. Everything about him screens backup guard and a power scheme. Average testing there. He's a bigger guy. I think he's a little bit heavy-footed. Length and power is pretty solid. Uh, so Brown's adding some more offensive line depth. Always a good thing. Dylan Johnson out of Washington goes to Tennessee, 221 overall on my board. Alex Collins comp. Might, might ring a bell for a couple of you guys watching out there. Massive breakout season after transferring from Mississippi State. Didn't do a lot of running at Mississippi State. Uh, had 89 carries two years in a row. Did have 48 catches and 65 catches. Then those numbers flipped because it's not the Mike Leach offense. Um, Battled through a lot of injuries down the stretch this year. Those might have raised some red flags. A fractured bone in his right foot, a high left ankle sprain, burst of sack in his left knee, had all kinds of issues. Knee, a couple times, hip and hand. Like, there was all kinds of injuries he was playing through. He's coming off that foot injury he played through for the CFP. Uh, tough kid, though. Coaches are going like to this, like this guy a lot. It's Tulu Griffin. Just, just call him Tulu rather than trying to say Beatrice Griffin. I see... This is perfect for Raiders fans out there. Skinnier Andre Roberts comp. It's funny when those all pan out for me in my notes there. Um, I don't know if you've got a real sleeper wide receiver. If you do, it's like, ah, it's Darnell Mooney. I think the floor as a return man, he averaged 30 yards per kick return in his collegiate career, three of them. I thought should have gotten him drafted with the way that the, the rules are changing here. Uh, nicknamed Tulu because he's too loose. Uh, on football field, you always find ways to, to get open there. Size is he's small. But the speed is there. The after the catch ability uh, is intriguing as well. I would not sleep on him making this this roster for Las Vegas. The Dolphins got another edge rusher. This time it's Grayson Murray. This is the twin of Gabriel Murphy. This will be the first time in a long time they're not playing together. They were both at UNT and then at UCLA. The player comp here is Gabriel Murphy, just not as good. Uh, they have almost identical testing uh, across the board. He's a little bit less athletic. He's got length issues as well. And he was more of a power player with the length. That's not a very good combination there. Sixth round grade for me, 223 overall. Frank Crum, one of your combine winners, or at least exciting personalities there, goes to Denver, sticks in the area there, which makes sense. He is already a licensed real estate agent in Wyoming. Um, can you imagine, like, you're, 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 you're getting a house shown to you, and it's this dude. It's 6'8", 313 pound, flowing, long, blonde hair. It's like, you're selling the house? What do you do? You play basketball? Nah, I play football. Oh, okay, that's actually that makes sense. Uh, Matt, well, let's go athletic comp there. He did not dominate lesser competition. Um, he did, he was diagnosed with uh, pericarditis. Uh, in March of 2023, was eventually cleared, but that was probably a red flag for teams uh, as, as well. He is first cousins with Adam Morrison. Remember him in Zaga? I wish he got a draft. I had, I had so many fun facts on him. Uh, Denver picked him up. The Niners pick up Cody Schrader. A lot of zone blocking stuff in that offense that he's played under there, so it's a good fit uh, for San Francisco. 
Uh, ridiculously productive, eighth in the Heisman Trophy this year, over 1,600 yards for the Tigers. Uh, transferred from Truman State to Missouri, and it worked. That's unbelievable there. Ronnie Rivers count. My issue here is the, the football, great college player. He walked on to Missouri, earned a scholarship. You love the story. He's just small, and he's not a very good athlete. And that's why he, in the end, he ended up going undrafted. Josh Proctor out of Ohio State goes to Jacksonville, 230 overall on my board. He is 25 years old. I thought he's a better as his own safety than trying to hold up in man coverage. He's better when everything's in front of him. Helps hide some of the, the issues of just like getting out of position at times, being a little stiff there. Late breakout player for Ohio State as well, which, which is a red flag for me. Two notes as we sit here filming. First up, Kingsley Egukan has not yet signed anywhere. He would have been number 12 on my UDFA list there out of Florida. These guys will sign at some point soon, I'm sure. Johnny Dixon also has not signed. Or he would have been number 14 on my list. So two players to just make note of that they're out there. And every now and then someone flips. Normally it's the night of. Um, I remember one year it was the Vikings-Cowboys were going back and forth on one receiver, and the Vikings ended up getting him. I can't remember who it was. Didn't pan out in the NFL. Uh, but some guys flip, so do keep that in mind. And you'll get like invites too to like the, the rookie mini camps and stuff. Who did I not put on the list? You know, I did 300 players, so there are several guys I did not get to put on here and other guys I didn't even get to that either A, got drafted, that's why I drink as a punishment, or signed. Drop that player name for me in the comments section.